All right, so good morning, good evening, good afternoon, and welcome. So this is the beginning of chapter four, lesson 4.1, and we're gonna start writing the equations in slope-intercept form. Now, we were graphing them in chapter three, and now we're going to start to write these equations out. And I wanna make sure you guys can do this. Uh, beginning in chapter four, ladies and gentlemen, we will have bell work again. Um, please answer the first one, and you should be able to answer this third one as well. We didn't cover the second. Okay, so on your bell work worksheet, please make sure you have these filled out. Here is the actual work. So the slope of the line that passes through um, these two points, you use the slope formula, plug those values in. Remember, this is y2 over x2. Doesn't matter which point I picked. Make sure you have your y over your x. Simplify, negative and negative is positive. Reduce, two over three. Um, on this one here, functionality translated this function two units down. One easy way to do it is the decimals to make sure you uh, get it correctly. But if you remember our HK, okay, the K functionality was the outside. That was the vertical arrangement with it. You would just take it from a four to a two and you'll actually drop your graph down two points. Okay, so now we're going to be talking about writing a function. A lot of mathematical practices, two of them. But we're going to get kind of in deep if you guys look at the standards that we're going to be covering here. Um, we graph lines given a slope and a y-intercept. Now we're going to write an equation with a slope and a given point. And then write an equation of a line in slope-intercept form given two points. Now, uh, if you guys remember when we did our uh, CUDA exercise, I gave you um, a point. I gave you two points and you had to find the slope. But I remember I gave you the uh, y-intercept. So that's the key that we're missing. Okay. Um, on your notes, please make sure you guys have printed them out from Canvas. If you don't have them from Canvas, get them from me. Uh, we're on 225, so please have your books open because I want to make sure I explain a couple formulas to you. So write an equation in slope-intercept form for a line that passes through this point and has this slope. So we're doing the slope-intercept form. Y equals mx plus b. And if you remember what we are looking for here is in this instance, what are we given? Well, we're given the slope, which is m. And we are given this point. So this is the y coordinate, remember x, y. So we're given negative three, and then we're given the x value times two. But what are we not given? We're not given the y intercept. So what we have to do is find the solution for it. So two times one half is one. So if I do have this calculation, negative three equals one plus B. And so I wanna get B all by itself. I would subtract one from both sides and you end up with what? B equals negative four. What I want is the slope intercept form of this equation. So I want it back into here. So I do want the Y equals X plus. Okay, and if you guys remember, I told you, just fill in the blanks. We know the slope, one half, and we know our b-intercept now is negative four. So if I put negative four, if you want to leave it like that, you can. You're never gonna see it in a student example like that, so you can simplify it out to that. Your turn. All right, remember, you're gonna write it slope-intercept form first, and then you're gonna find the y-intercept, okay? So, if I have, here's my y functionality, so it's five equals my, um, it says what? Let me write it down, I'm gonna forget. See, even I have to write stuff down to look. All right, so slope is three times negative two plus b. This example over here is going to be negative seven equals your slope, negative one times four plus b. Let's go back over here. All right, so on this one here, combine three times six, or three times two is negative six plus b, add six. Oh, wow, had a little slight little, like what am I doing a moment? Add six to both sides, and you're gonna get what? B equals 11. Plug it all in now. So it's going to be Y equals 
3x plus 11. And then what you have also, ladies and gentlemen, is your following setup. Sorry, I'm talking to Mr. Kettlehead off screen. For all of you guys that get geometry next year, I hope you don't get him. He's a horrible teacher. Horrible teacher. Um, I'm just kidding. He's the best. All right, so what you guys now have is make sure you multiply this together. And what you do is you would add 4 to both sides. Okay. And you'd end up with what? B equals negative 3. So now you have your slope. So it's Y equals... Your slope is negative 1x, and then it is negative, so it's going to be plus negative 3. Now, there's a lot of change you can do on this one. So it's just going to be y equals negative x minus 3. Hopefully you guys see that and you understand appropriately. Make sure you make those simple modifications at the end, so that way it actually has the full setup and equation. All right, now we're going to write an equation given two points. We have to do kind of the same thing. Now, these are our longer exercises, okay? If you're given two points, what do you think we need to do if we're going to write it in the slope-intercept form? We are missing not only the slope, but we're also missing the y-intercept. So you're going to have to do actually a three-step process to actually get these right. So what I want to make sure you guys do is do all this setup uh, appropriately. So first off, we need to get the slope, okay? So your slope is going to be m equals the y2 minus y1, x2, x1. So on this one, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to have to do a lot of mathematical process just to get the simple equation. Now, um, what do we have here? If you set these up, um, the setup on this, you just do plug in your values now. Uh, negative 8, negative 2, minus, minus. And it's going to be negative 4 over negative 3. Set them up. Negative 8 plus 4 is negative 4. And then this is going to be uh, negative 2, that is plus 3. So negative 2 plus 3 is a 1. So your value is what? Your slope is going to end up being negative 4. So m equals negative 4. Whew, that's great. But now what are we missing? Now we need to get the y-intercept, right? So now we have, pick one of these points, doesn't matter what we're gonna do, but now we're gonna write it into y equals mx plus b. Hopefully everybody's following along. We have the points, we have the slope, now we need to find the b value. So we're gonna plug in, let's work with the three and four, this seems a little better. So it's gonna be negative four equals, my slope is negative four times my x value, which is negative 3 plus b. So, next thing you do, ladies and gentlemen, is what? Simplify it up. Negative 4 times negative 3 is going to be 12 plus b and a negative 4. Okay, now let's do the, so let me erase this part. Okay, now let's work on the last piece, which is putting this together. So if this is 12 and I got a negative 4 on this side, subtract 12, and you get what? B equals negative 16. So now, do you have your slope? Yes. Do you have your uh, y-intercept? Yes, you do. You can finish off the equation. Y equals negative 4x, and it's going to be minus 16. A lot of work to get the equation, but hopefully you guys kind of see where we're at with everything. Um, all right, next setup on here. Write the equation of the line that passes through this point, six negative two. So you set it up the same way. So ladies and gentlemen, do the slope formula without me. All right, so that is your slope. Hopefully everybody saw how I did that. You just do the simple math across the board. So if you guys are struggling with this already, okay, make sure that you can work on this some more to get the slopes and everything else down. My slope is six, 
Now I need to find a point. Y equals mx plus b. So let's work with three and four again, because those seem easier to do. Four equals, my slope is six times three, and it's plus b. So six times three is 18 plus b equals four. You do your final setup, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, let's go blue. Negative 18, negative 18, and I have with b equals negative 14. So, do I have my slope, y-intercept? Yes, I do. It'd be y equals 6x minus 14. A lot of work. If you struggle with how I did this, rewind this video and watch it again. Because, ladies and gentlemen, I wanna make sure you two, you guys can do these two on your own. All right, hopefully you guys have set these up. Now we're gonna set up these points, okay? The y, negative eight over four, minus, minus, 12, minus one. So this is gonna be negative 20, and that's gonna be plus, so four plus one is five, which reduces down to negative four. So there's my slope, equals m. All right, now that I got my slope, set up the rest. Um, let's work with, I like this negative one here. Does it matter which one you choose? No, it doesn't. You just pick the point that you think is gonna be the easiest for you to work with, okay? Um, if you see a one, I pick a one. If you see a, a all um, positive numbers, pick the one with all positive numbers. It's just whatever your preference is. So this one, the y is 12 equals, uh, slope is negative four times negative one uh, plus b. So multiply the negatives together. I'm gonna get four, because negative times the negative is positive, equals 12. And then, ladies and gentlemen, uh, you set it up, subtract four from both sides. B is gonna equal eight. Now you have your B, now you have your M. So this equation is Y equals negative four X plus eight. Once again, if I'm going too fast, rewind and watch it again. All right, set it up, zero. Negative seven, minus, minus, negative eight, and a five. So this ends up being eight, and then that is gonna be seven and five is 12, and that is negative. So I can reduce eight over 12 to two over three. Is that right? So five, 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 four, two, and three. Yep, okay, I'm like, is that right? All right, so my slope, here's my m equals, all right, now that I have that, my first fraction, oh yay, oh yay. It's been simple up until now. So now uh, what you do is pick a point. I'm gonna go with the zero coordinate, because why not, right? Um, and then my slope is negative two over three times negative seven plus B. So seven times, seven times two is gonna be what? Negative 14, I pick a hard one. Let me, hold on, let me do this in my head. All right, let's pick the other one. Because <laughs> I'm doing that in my head, I'm like, I don't know if I can do that without a calculator. Okay, so let's pick the other one. My Y is gonna be, oh, it doesn't matter, it's still the same thing. Because it's negative eight, Jason. All right, let's go back to what we had. Let's stay with this. Because remember, this is seven over one. So multiply this out. Negative and a negative is gonna be positive, so it's gonna be 14 divided by three. Can you do a thing with that? No, you cannot. All right, plus B. And I'm gonna end up with, how would you get this, and it's gonna equal zero. So how would you move this 14 over three to the other side? Ladies and gentlemen, you just subtract the whole thing. Okay, and what I mean by that is you just subtract this side by 14 over three, subtract this side by 14 over three. And if you do that, ladies and gentlemen, these cancel out, okay, because 14 over three minus 14 over three is what? Zero. So these cancel out, so you get B equals negative 14 over three. So how about that complicated formula? Here is your slope, and here is your B intercept. So if I write it out, it's 
y equals negative 2 thirds x, and then that is a minus 14 over 3. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is correct. Crazy equation. This one's a little crazy. All right, next, real world problem. The following table shows uh, Malik's cost of self-service gas for two months of the year. Write a linear equation based on the data to predict Malik's cost for gasoline the first of any month during the year using one to represent January. All right, so what we're gonna wanna do is we are gonna wanna get the rate of change. Okay, so from June to July is how many months? Uh, it's actually just one. Right, so this one actually, the setup is going to be, if I'm using uh, January to start with one, it's gonna go six to seven, right? Oop, let me space that out a little bit better. Because what month, so this is X, and this is Y. So the month of June is gonna be six minus seven, and that's all over your price of gas. So June price is 320, and it's gonna be minus, 342. Now, could I have set this up the other way because I'm going to get two negatives? Yes, but why would I do anything simple? So this is going to be negative 22 cents and that's going to be over negative one. So basically your answer is what? Your slope is 0.22 every month. You guys can kind of see what the rate of change is. So that's your slope. So now we have a point. So if we want to find out when this uh, represent the first month of January, what we're going to do is we're going to plug this into an equation. All right, we have our points. So remember, this is six. So let's use the x and the y. Um, so my y function is going to be 320, and it's going to equal because I'm doing the y equals mx plus b, right? So um, my slope is going to be 0.22. And that's going to be multiplied by my month, which is June, and then it's going to be added to B. Now, what you need to do, ladies and gentlemen, is make sure you understand what is 0.22 times 6. Let me grab a calculator because I have no idea off the top of my head. All right, 0.22 times 6 is 1.32. So I have 3.20 equals 1.32 plus B. And then, ladies and gentlemen, you would do what? The final piece of this puzzle is subtract it from both sides. All right, so 3.2 minus 1.32 equals 1.88. So my price of gas at the beginning of the year allegedly is 1.88. So we have our slope, we have this, so ladies and gentlemen, you would actually set up your equation. Y equals 0.22x plus 1.88. Here is your formula. What are we supposed to find? The first month of any year using one to represent January. So if I wanted to find it, I'd actually do what? Change this to a one? So my answer is gonna be 1.88 plus 0.22 and it comes out to be y equals $2.10. All right, and then as you guys move along, if we were to put six back into this equation, we should end up with the dollar amount of 320. If you guys have any questions on this, please see me. Your turn. All right, so look at this, ladies and gentlemen, there's a couple of assumptions we can make. Okay, um, in addition to his weekly salary, Ethan is paid $16 per delivery. Okay, it says let um, D equal delivery. So what is his rate of change for his slope gonna be? Well, do we need to go and do every type of slope intercept to try to figure it out? In this example, we really don't because if he's paid 16 times a delivery, uh, I know that that's gonna be my initial equation, okay? Um, last week he made five deliveries and his total pay was 215. All right, so if Ethan, is this, and if I know it's 16 times five, okay, and his total was actually what? 215, what is the original base salary? Do we know it? No, we don't, but guess what you can do? You can figure it out by doing this simple equation. So 16 times five, put it in the calculator, 16 times five, 
and that is 80. So I'm going to get 215 equals 80 plus B. You would do what, ladies and gentlemen? The next thing you would do would be to subtract 80 from both sides. And you'd get B equals, and I believe that is 216. I mean, one th well, that was not even close. <laughs> 135. So what is the actual equation if I want to write slope-intercept form for his salary based on deliveries? It would be y equals plus 135. All right, real-world scenario. On average, Malik uses 25 gallons of gas per month. Uh, he is budgeted 100 for gasoline in October. Use the prediction equation example three to determine if Malik will have to add to his budget. Okay, so knowing this, looking back at our example, we know that Malik uses 25 gallons of gas. Okay, so if we go back to Malik's little cost here, we know that the equation is y equals 0.22x plus 1.88. So let's write that down. y equals 0.22. 2x plus 1.88. So that's his original equation. All right, it says here he's budgeted $100. So his total is going to be $100. Now the question is, if he uses 25 gallons of gas per month, he's budgeted $100 for gasoline in October, will he be able to do this? So if you remember, we said the number one, okay, was gonna be what? January. So October is what month? 10. So we need to make sure he budgets enough money in October. So what you would do, ladies and gentlemen, simply enough, substitute y equals 0.22 times 10, because that's the month of October, 0.88. Put that in the calculator. Do I need to? No, because I can actually do this in my head. This, if you times this by 10, is gonna move the decimal point over, plus 1.88. Now, uh, actually, sorry, wrong way. It's actually going to be, I think, two decimal places, correct? Do, 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 yeah. Do, 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 do. Let me make sure I got it right. Oh, yeah, it's only one. So his y is going to equal 2.2 plus 1.88 is going to be $4.08. So his y is going to be 408. And it said he's going to estimate how much. So he's going to use 25 gallons of gas in the month of October. So take a while to guess what you would do with this number here. Multiply it by 25. So 4.08 times 25 ends up being 4.08 times 25, $102. So if he budgets, if he budgets $100, is he going to have enough in October? No, he's not. He's going to be short by $2. All right, so use the guided practice, talking about how much money Ethan will earn in the week if he makes eight deliveries. All right, remember the original equation from him, Ethan? The equation was y equals 16d plus 135. Let me make sure I can remember that. y equals 16d plus 135, oh sweet, I remembered. All right, then you make a prediction model. Y equals 16 times eight plus 135. If I put in 16 times eight in my calculator, it is 128. 128 plus 135, it's going to be 135. His salary is going to be, his weekly pay, $263. So ladies and gentlemen, what you wanna do is sometimes we have to find the equation in AZ Merit. You have to find the equation and then you actually have to plug in a number to give you a prediction about what it's going to be. Um, the homework will be in the comment section and it's also posted on Canvas. If you have any questions about this lesson, make sure you come see me. Otherwise, you guys have a fantastic day.